School Care Network game tutorial. As you can see from the table, today we're going to be talking about counters. Uh, how to make counters, some tips about their size and colour, uh, different creative ideas for making your counters look cool, and um, mainly talking about counters being made for board games where you're going to make the board and the rest of the game materials as well. You could use this, these ideas also for replacing counters from uh, games you already have where the counters are missing. Uh, but really want you to think of today about you know, saving money by making your own games. Uh, not that you shouldn't spend some money and buy a really good board game, a, a good board game that children like to play and will get a lot of use. I've got some recommendations for that on some other videos. But I want you to think about, well, next to no money or resources, we can still have a good selection of interesting games that, that kids will enjoy playing. Uh, I also want you to think about uh, the idea that these games could be made very quickly. Okay, that one afternoon when you're a little bit stuck for something to do, or you haven't quite got the equipment you needed, you can very quickly make a game like Ute, um, a very fast multiplayer Lords and Crosses game, uh, and some of the other ones that I'm going to show you. Within less than five minutes, you can have counters and board already, just with paper, pens, and some simple materials. And then thirdly, if you want to spend a little bit more time making counters and your board, uh, you can make them look really fun. Use of colour, um, colouring in, illustrating your board, just making it a little bit more of a work of art can make a very nice uh, functional um, piece of art or creative work that kids can take home or you can keep at your program for uh, enjoyment on other days, particularly those days where you have to be indoors. Although I would also say that it can be quite fun to uh, take board games outdoors uh, and create boards you know, on a very large scale and play them as well. So there are lots of different ways you can do this. So hoping to get you thinking about different, different ways to use board games uh, and how to make them fun and inviting. So um, stay tuned and I'll just uh, zoom in the video a little bit more so we can see what we've got here and uh, give you a few ideas. Before we talk about actually making counters, it's useful to think about what the counters are for. And there's two reasons you probably want counters in any kind of board or card game. Uh, one is uh, to represent players and move around a board or uh, to keep track of score. So counters that are more like chips, keeping track of points. First, let's think about the board. How big is the board you want to play on? Let's, for example, look at a really small board. And we'll make this board up straight away for a game of noughts and crosses. So, hey presto, instant board. Okay, the board is red. So, you probably want counters that work with the colour and also with the size of the board. So, we could try stones. Not too big. One player plays dark, and one player plays light. I got these stones in a bag from a $2 shop. Uh, yeah, and quite a large supply of them within the bag. And you just quite nice because they're all different shapes, slightly different colours. So white plays, black plays, white plays, black plays, white plays. And black is trying to make their line. White wins. Bingo. So counters depend on the size of the board and need to work in with the colour. For instance, you could have a white board up here. And slightly bigger. This is a nine men's Morris board. Okay. So what we got here is a series of spots that have to be occupied by counters. So these might work. I find them a little dull though. So you might instead look for something more colourful. For instance, your poker chips. Red and blue. 
red plays, blue plays, and so on. The problem with that, of course, is when we come to the middle, if blue had played here, as you can see, they start to get quite close together. So these are almost a little bit big. Want something in between? Why don't we try small pieces of Lego? Quite colourful. Yellow. Green. Yellow. And so on. So these are quite actually quite a nice size for the board. If you haven't got something as convenient as that, you might look at some paper counters. I've got some other ways of making them in a minute. Okay, we'll just show you some different boards first. If you've got a very large board, this is a drafts board that I've drawn up very quickly and I'll show you in another time in another video how to do a very fast drafts board. Very handy if you've got only one real board but you've got lots of kids that want to play. So you can very quickly make the boards, but what are you going to use for counters? Well again, these poker chips are quite nice size. They fit quite well on the board. Uh, you can go even bigger and use something like balls, uh, these vinyl balls, uh, which we actually sell at Oscan in sets, which can make quite, um, quite good uh, contrasting colours. We've got green or um, red there. So that's another way that you can make, um, make easy to follow counters for your games. And of course if you've got a large board you might also have a colour board and I quite like this colour of red that I've used for this Othello board. And of course on that one you probably won't use red, red counters. You'd be looking for maybe black and white which is what I've indicated on the dots there. Um, we show you how to play Othello in another video, but just a few different ideas about boards. Let's look at a few different kinds of counters that we can make and use in games. Uh, in this matchbox here, and it's a very handy way to store your counters once you've made them, I've got paper counters uh, made just by blue tack and pieces of paper. So you can see if you pick the right colours here and you made enough of them, you've got quite simple, easy to move counters because that is another issue is picking up the counter if you have to pick it up and move it around. These ones work quite well. I've also got smaller paper counters if your board was really small like for instance this uh, Bonsai game uh, published by Da Vinci Games called Luca. It has very small pieces, to very small uh, spaces to move around. So I'd need even smaller counters for that, quite hard to see from there, but I think you get the idea. 